everybody, Josh RV Nerd in Windy, Iowa today with the Imagine 2670 MK. You said you wanted to see it, so I made the trip out here and I got this thing. I didn't make a trip specifically to get just this one, but it was on my hit list. You make suggestions and you make requests and I'm gonna do the best I can to fill those in. This is a cool model. I see the attraction. I understand why you wanted me to come get this one. It has opposing slides and they did something here that almost every other builder I've ever seen uh, fails to do. They gave us not just windows off the seating slide off the driver's side of the RV, but they found a way to open up the RV and give us awesome door side window coverage. And frankly, it makes this thing feel absolutely massive. This feels like as large, if not larger, than some of the biggest fifth wheels I've ever been in. And the total amount of countertop space that you get because of how they accomplished this is off the charts. I don't know if I've seen another trailer that has this level, oh my gosh, the wind, uh, this level of countertop space out here. Um, the uh, There's some ups and some downs. They did kind of pull a little rabbit out of their hat doing it. Uh, the TV's on a power televator, so that could cause you to lose one window. The uh, RV has a little outside camp kitchen, and when the door's flipped up, you might lose the other door side window. So you could actually lose your coverage, but it's up to you. It gives you the opportunity to camp the way that you want to. In the meantime, we have an awesome uh, bedroom bathroom arrangement with a nice rectangular shower and a true queen bed with some cool CPAP friendly side pockets, fifth wheel style enclosed docking station, light bright color palette, um, a, uh, a factory solar package to help keep things up and running. Uh, an interesting fact, the number one cause of most electrical related issues in the RV industry is actually low battery. So having any level of factory solar on there can really, uh, even if you don't think it's that much, it can really eliminate a lot of problems. And, and I like what they're doing here. And speaking of that, they do a lot more PDI work to proactively avoid problems. And we're gonna talk about all that and more as we go. Let me know what you think about this one. And uh, if you like the uh, fair way that we go through these things, showing you the ups and the downs, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And, and I mean, like I said, this has a, a living room that looks and feels as big, if not bigger than most giant luxury fifth wheels, because you don't really have like a wall enclosing it. You have opposing super slides with windows everywhere light colors vaulted ceiling i mean it, it's just enormous now maybe you don't like a little bit of carpet in the slide Look, grand design's still doing that some other brands have moved away from it if that's a deal breaker let me know if you like carpet in the slide let me know that too maybe it's not all bad it's just some people have certain preferences um but the, the total amount of counter space in this i just i don't know of another rv where you're going to match the, if you are a campsite cook you like to spread out you like to really you know you want to hand make the cookies and biscuits and roll out the the flour and everything man you you got the room to do it in here that is uh that's for sure um the decor is on the lighter side of neutral but definitely in that neutral decor i i uh like the usb plug placement there for the couch it is you know only available on one side of the couch but i, I like it better than being built on the uh you know, facing inward side. Now you see that plaid pattern on that dinette right there? Keep an eye on that as the video rolls around. That's actually going to go away. In a sense, they've let you pick your own decor. And how about this? An actual desk in this thing. Basically, if you're familiar with Grand Design's lineup, this is like a, uh, uh, a travel trailer version of a 320 MKS reflection, which I do believe we have a video of. An actual desk back here. Not a lot of travel trailers or fifth wheels or anything come with a factory sponsored office desk station, basically. Or you could just use it as additional countertop, right? <gasps> Ooh, that could be an amazing spot for a pet kennel, too. Ooh, that would be really cool. Over there, we're looking at that 12 volt compressor fridge. There is a gas electric two way. And no matter what, you have some factory standard solar in here. Let's take a quick look at this island. And then we're going to be making another pass in a minute. Uh, with all of the storage open. But I want you just to get a nice look at everything closed up nice and clean. Look at that toe kick, though. That is a nice little touch so that you can actually belly right up to the bar and not stress your lower back. Now, they are fantastic about not, not wasting cabinet space. So when you look down here and you see a big blank spot, you're like, dude, what gives? That is the outside fridge and camp cooker kind of situation. Um, so that's what we're looking at there. Now, if I plop over here, onto the uh the sofa you see that we are just greeted by this just big door side window and tootsie toaster 
But hidden away behind that fireplace is an electric lift televator right there. And that's also a TCL Roku smart TV. So it's app enabled. Basically, you want to, if you're a streaming media enthusiast, Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime, all that good stuff. You can check all that out there. It's incredible how much free streaming TV is out there uh, available now, by the way. Um, and notice, too, I don't have to, like, lift the camera way up. It's not going to be a neck crank. You guys remember when we were kids all growing up playing Sega Genesis and Nintendo? And we would get Nintendo neck. The back of your neck would just hurt from sitting there on the floor staring up at the TV so much. You don't got to deal with that here. Did you notice that motion light kick off by the door? And if you'd prefer... To watch Mother Nature instead of the boob tube, well, the handy televator gets it right out of the way, and just, it's insane how just getting that TV out of the way opens up that huge amount of space. Again, I think there's more square foot of, car, uh, of countertop space in this RV versus maybe, literally, any other RV I have ever seen ever, and that's a pretty bold statement considering I've done this for a baker's dozen years. So down there, you've got a 5,000 BTU space heater. The RV also has a 30,000 BTU furnace um, and a, a really strong radiant package and heated belly. So uh, this is hot, cold, camp tested, rated, and proven. And just that little mirror on the wall, especially with all the windows, really opens things up uh, awful nicely. And that's the thing. A lot of manufacturers who are going to make a floor plan like this with some kind of door side camp kitchen, the windows are almost always here on the driver's side where all you're looking at is the sweaty shirtless neighbor. Now, if the sweaty shirtless neighbor is from the uh, Swedish supermodel team, well, then, you know, maybe that's not too bad. But I've never been to a campground where uh, that is the case. Instead, you tend to be looking at, well, Uncle Gary most of the time. And, uh, you know, <laughs> no thank you. Now, a couple other nice little details here for you. The blackout roller nightshades throughout the RV really maximizes the privacy and on a screaming hot day, does a massive job of keeping that scorching sunshine heat out there. You guys remember that level in Super Mario 3 where the sun was trying to kill you? Well, it turns out that was just a precursor for the rest of your life. Now, I'm curious. Hide a bed like we're seeing or theater seat? Also, while we're asking questions, booth dinette, which has storage and folds down into an extra sleeper, as you see, or table and chairs. I actually, personally, I almost want to say theater seat and table and chairs, but then you give up all your guests sleeping, but I like the theater seat across from that. That being said, this dinette, what's nice about it, the, uh, the table base is always resting on the ground, so the table is better supported, which is cool. That being said, one thing I want to caution you on, you almost might want to put a little extra drop legger support on the front of it, because if a bigger adult sits right on the front of this, it's going to tip them over, and then you're probably going to end up with a gash on your wall. That's a little pro tip for you there from your Uncle Josh. But the reason I was thinking table and chairs, because I actually, I really like this booth. Um, having a chair already included with the RV that I could just slide over here into that desk space, well, that would be pretty darn nifty, now wouldn't it? That being said, a small little folding chair or stool or something like that, eh, you know, also wouldn't be too awful hard to come up with. Now, remember when I said keep an eye on those dinette cushions because the plaid was going to go away? Like I said, it's just reversible. Um, and uh, the, the decor is super, super neutral. But it's the kind of color palette that if you throw in uh, a couple, say like a little throw blanket or some pillows for a little pop of color, it really, really springs to life in these things. Um, you know, everywhere you look, you've got pocket screwed cabinetry. It's all nice and deep. Big pantry beside the um, 12 volt or eight, uh, or, or two-way fridge, whichever one you choose to go with. Now, um, down here, below the refrigerator, you've got a couple uh, drawers. Now, they have some plastic inserts in them, either for like uh, organizers for, you know, certain things or like little dog dish kind of things. You can take those out. You don't have to leave those in there. And, um, you know, I, I'd be kind of, what kind of stuff would you put down there under the fridge? Because those are some, that's some pretty decent storage under the fridge most brands don't give you. The island is asymmetrical, which I really like. Because as you can kind of see down here, it grants us a couple extra drawers. And something else they're doing that I really like are these one-piece roll-away dish drying racks. As opposed to like a split. Because I can always fold that over. But the one-piece just feels more secure when it's in there to me. 
big space for wastebasket. I am a stickler about that kind of stuff. And notice the little rubber bumper on the, uh, the door down there. It's those extra little touches that I see Grand Design do. And they're not necessarily the exclusive user of little stuff like that. But it's those little things. It costs very little. And it's going to make your daily camping experience so much more enjoyable, often in a way that you're not even going to consciously perceive. Um, the, uh, you know, every time you close the cabinet door, you don't hear bam, bam. Uh, every time you're, you know, say you're, uh, a kid or grandkid flings the door shut because they're not yet learning their own strength, you don't hear that big bang. And every time you don't hear a bang means it's less violent, which means the cabinetry is more likely to hold together long term as well. And you know, as I'm looking at this, this is one of the, the few RVs that I look at and I say, you know, there's actually so much storage here. I'm almost concerned that the cargo carrying weight is not quite high enough. Um, I'm kind of going a little bit from memory here, but I think this has around 1,600 pounds of available cargo capacity. You're going to want to be careful, I think, that you don't overload this just because you have so much room to store stuff. That is, I suppose, a good problem to have, but a good problem is a problem still. So just kind of be, you know, conscious of that. Um, moving on back here, the you got handy little motion lighting, welcoming you back when you come into the RV. But you've got a couple little ways to help you get your bearings. First of all is that one. Secondly, the control panel right here, uh, with the sun glaring off, I don't know if you're going to see it, but it will light up just by motion too. So as you step inside, that will light up and help you get your bearings. You can turn things like the lights and whatnot off and on. And you can remotely connect to this uh, with your phone if you feel like it, but you don't have to. There's still just buttons, which is nice. Uh, the bathroom and bedroom. If you watched uh, one of our previous releases on the 2970, this is the exact same bed and bath. They reuse this all the time. It is very nice around the toilet space there. If you look, they actually angled the wall out a little bit to give you just a touch more elbow room. Again, it's those little details, little touches like that. Good leg room, uh, uh, 30 by 36 uh, shower. Notice that even as tall as I am sitting on the toilet, I could still put my head under that extra little linen cabinet and towel bar there. And with the vaulted ceiling, I've got plenty of headroom in here. It works nicely. Uh, little uh, points of critique, small fan in the bathroom. I think, shout out to Mr. Steve Z, regular viewer. Um, uh, and, and, and I'm not criticizing you, Steve. You're going to say, for this many MSRP dollars, I can't believe it doesn't come with cabinet doors uh, in the bathroom and uh, uh, one of the bigger Max Air vent fans. And, uh, sir, I don't personally disagree with you. Those are two areas in which we definitely most certainly agree, but they're things that I can deal with. I, I really like the drawer space in this bathroom, and I noticed they give you easy access to uh, a lot of electrical connections right here. So, God forbid you need any kind of service work or diagnosis. Holy cow, that makes it easier. And folks, I'm telling you, uh, from years of experience, trying to diagnose electrical challenges is the hardest thing to do. Because basically, it's not like, oh, there's the problem. It's, we have to check this. Nope, we have to check that. Nope, it becomes a process of elimination. You don't know what the problem is. You have to figure out what the problem isn't and narrow it down. Now, uh, up here in the bedroom, one of the cool options that you have, this is a 50 amp unit. You can outfit it from the factory with a second centralized air conditioner. Um, and you know, this is uh, definitely big enough. I, I do see for sure the need on that. They do offer that on some of their smaller models. And I know that some of our clients from the, uh, the, the, the hotter climates definitely will say, I don't care what size the RV is. I want the maximum air I can possibly get. Well, I get that. I love the storage in this bedroom. Just like that kitchen living area, they really, really crush storage in here. Um, you got the, uh, this is a true queen bed, by the way. You see that little easy lift deck there, but even like a little sliding drawer tote. And um, it's a symmetrical bedroom. So you've got the same two big uh, dresser drawers over there that you have over here. Hanging closets on both sides. The one thing this bedroom does not have is the ability to be outfitted with a king bed. Uh, because the way this is all built in, boxed in, they don't do two different like bed cabinet arrangements. It's cool that we have a true queen, but that's all you have the option for here. Someone who actually does a pretty crafty uh, job of that is East to West RV. They have a very similar bedroom arrangement, 
but you can have it built with either a king or a queen bed, which I think is very cool. Um, they do that in both their Delaterras and their Alta travel trailers. TV hookups on the wall over there, not exactly the most conducive spot, but uh, this is a sliding door, and uh, it's not like you can really mount a TV on that. I mean, you could, but then it's going to slide off. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, that right there, though, that that is what really sends the uh, like bedroom absolutely over the top for me. So it starts with a big pair of dresser drawers down below, which means we have six total dresser drawers in this bedroom. We've already got two hanging closets, and now we've got another, like, double hanging closet up there. So, effectively, this bedroom essentially has about twice the storage of a conventional travel trailer. Uh, in, in just the bedroom, anyway. I mean, that's, that's not too bad. But I also took the liberty of closing up the slides, taking a look at it in road mode, and for a second, I saw this, this gap through here. I'm like, oh, it might be a little tight, but we could do the sideways travel trailer two-step and we could squeeze through there. And yeah, we can, but why though? Um, the trick is with this being that awesome rear kitchen, it doesn't, you know, really give you any sort of traveling access. So uh, if you're going to, well, hold on, hold on. I just had a bit of a thought here. Scary, I know. All right, so first of all, this gusty Iowa wind is an awesome example of that anti-slam door doing exactly what it's supposed to. The weevils wobble, but they don't fall down. Okay, so the door side slide is the one that's preventing us from really getting to the kitchen stuff, right? Well, if you look at it, it doesn't stick out further than the stable steps. So logically, if you can deploy the stable steps, then you can deploy the kitchen slide, and then we are extremely travel stop friendly. So there's a bit of a yes but involved there, but the fact is, I, I, I think there's some legitimacy to that. Like, I don't know, what do you think about that? Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I gotta give them, I gotta give them serious credit points for the curb appeal on these. They, they look fantastic. They look like they're moving even when they're sitting still. Now let's talk towability. That's a big, big deal, obviously. Um, a lot of your imagines are half ton towable. This is long enough. The opposing slides in the back, mostly above the axles handling the weight, but um, long enough and heavy enough at uh, just under 7,200 pounds of dry weight. I don't know that I really want to call this one half ton towable. Um, the, uh, it, it just starts to feel like it's it's enough truck or it's enough trailer that it could start to muscle around most half ton trucks. Now, depending on where you live and how you camp, that may vary a little bit. Like I tell you what, out here in Iowa with all this wind, there is no way I would half ton this thing. You get hit by a wicked cross breeze and uh, the, the trailer would just pull you right off the road. Now, if you live in a place that's a lot more calmer in terms of mother nature, and you're only towing a short distance, eh, maybe a half ton would work for you, I don't know. Now look at the awning on this. It has, I mean, one of the biggest one piece awnings I think I've ever seen. So instead of doing a split awning, they did a double awning. Uh, and there's there's ups and there's downs to this. So uh, the you are losing technically, yes, a little bit of that awning space, but again, it's monstrously long and that's not a super deep slide. Now, if they tried to do a second awning off the face of the slide out, um, which in theory could be done, uh, potentially, but it, it would cause a couple other issues. It would put a small awning up front and it would put an awning arm right next to the door. So you're gonna get rain spritzed in the face. And on this trailer, that's not gonna happen now. Um, the other thing is the awning, if it were mounted on the face of the slide out, would, the arms would bash you in the head. You know, it just wouldn't be fun. Now for ride and handling uh, down here, we are on those 87 mile an hour rated Goodyear endurance radials. Doc Brown and Marty could not quite get back in time with those, but where they're going, they don't need roads, so no big deal. Um, if you are looking to do a lot of towing, this is prepped and ready for the tire link, uh, tire pressure monitoring system, which is a, a very cool thing that integrates right into the free app made for Grand Designs called uh, Compass Connect, which is just LCI's one control. This I like. 
um, the outdoor fridge out here. Uh, now this is 110 only, so kind of keep that in mind. And that's the thing, I kind of see this RV as a portable park model. I think I mentioned that inside, I can't remember. But it's big enough you can spend an extended time somewhere. Um, but it's not so big that towing it would be totally out of the question. Um, so when you're at your park, that fridge is going to work. When you're traveling, that fridge does not operate. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, giant griddle on this thing too. Big old capital griddle right here. And actually it does something I, I really like. Like when it recesses in here, when it comes out, there's also that little extra shelf above. Like I like having that little that little thing up there instead of just wasted open space air and it's it's those tiny little details sometimes that work for me and it's not very obvious but yes since there's a griddle there is a gas grill quick connect uh basically right at the the back of the slide where it's not too hard to get to notice how they're still doing a ladder on here um there's been a lot of manufacturers who for supply reasons just weren't able to put ladders on their rvs it's very interesting to me grand design always did i suspect they were paying more of a premium so that they could get first in line to get ladders. That would make sense considering Grand Designs are rarely the least expensive RV, but there's there's a little bit more than just a ladder that goes into that. Before we step upstairs, I wanna tell you about a couple extra things they do that you can't see. Uh, working our way up here in front of the slide, uh, we've got a, hold on, how many sewer outlets are on this thing? I bet there's going to be two because we have a rear kitchen and wow, I am not seeing an outlet back there. Really? Did they actually manage to fully um, plumb this thing to one single outlet? It looks like they did unless I missed something. That is awesome. I totally did not expect that. I really thought this would be one of those annoying, inconvenient double hookup stations, but no, wow, okay, cool. That's some serious bonus points. Well done, Grand Design. All right. Um, uh, the the uh, the front storage. This is a miniature drop frame, like a, a, a just a huge storage compartment. It it actually drops down sort of like a uh, like a fifth wheel, and sort of like a fifth wheel. You see that enclosed wet bay docking station right there, and uh, equally sized, extra large doors on both sides of this bad boy. Okay, so I mentioned that um, Grand Designs run a little bit more money than uh, a lot of other trailers. There's a few reasons for it. Uh, one of the things they're doing that you can't see is that any critical seam point, like where a wall meets a roof or something like that, they're using um, a, a, a mylar tape instead of a butyl tape. And the difference there is that it doesn't dry out and rot out over time. So basically this RV has an internal and external seal. It's just one more prevention method to hopefully keep water out of this thing and keep you out of the shop and keep you camping. Always keep on top of your TLC and maintenance routines, however. That's the number one thing that always determines. I don't care what the manufacturer does. You, the owner, are truly the biggest factor in how well this thing does or does not hold up. Uh, something else they do, and I'm gonna try to get out of the wind over here, is they have a 100% uh, PDI policy at Grand Design. Every single unit that gets made, they're doing active checks going down the line, which a lot of manufacturers do. Then after it's built, it goes to a totally separate facility. Every single unit gets fully checked again, like all the appliances, all the, all the water lines, all the gas lines, all that stuff. They do that on every single unit. That takes more time, that takes more labor. They also have more internal staff doing things like uh, helping assist and process and fulfill warranty claims to get faster fulfillment um, and there's more time and labor involved there. But you're paying for that. That stuff doesn't, you know, things don't just happen for free if we're being real about this, but that's the extra benefit. That's the extra peace of mind. That's where the extra uh, quality factor comes in on one of these. And you, if you get on things like owner's forums, I'll never say that any RV company or brand or trailer or anything like that is perfect, but they have earned a big time reputation for being a brand that steps up and takes care of their customers. And it's those kind of things that help determine that. And the thing about the wind in Iowa is it really blows you away. Especially when you're up on the roof like this and there is absolutely nothing to, uh, to shield you from the wind. Speaking of that, I am body blocking the microphone with my dad bod best I can to try to make sure that you can still hear some of this. We got ourselves a roof uh, heat vent right there. And along with that, helping keep you cooler and more comfortable in the summertime, the entire roof of this RV has a radiant foil layer 
you know, uh, and that also goes down the nose cap and under the belly. Plus, in the nose cap, they do also use uh, a layer of batten insulation. So um, they like to say double insulating. Um, the idea there being that you know you maintain more even temperatures. That is also one of the reasons they don't use windshields in their nose caps because that would basically be putting an R zero factor dead in the nose of this thing that uh, you know turns you into a magnifying glass. That being said, windshields absolutely look super smexy on RVs. There's no denying that. But if you're looking for heating and cooling efficiency, they're a terrible idea. And that is why I like having access to just so many different RVs and this facility just has acres and acres of inventory, man. Look at that. And once again, uh, this video chosen today by you folks. If there's something else you'd like to see, let me know. I've got a list going. I'll check it twice and I'll do my best to, to fill it in, whether you've been naughty or nice. I don't care. I'm not Saint Nick. So uh, <laughs> I'm not a saint at all. Wait, holy cow, that wind. When you're ready, we're ready. We don't do hidden dealer fees. We do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Go Bishin'.